Hey DIYers, what's going on? Mike Borders with the Mike Borders channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking outdrive engines. We have an Alpha 1 Gen 1 specifically. Hey, if you're joining us from our previous video, part six, we're so happy to have you. In this video, it's part seven. Let's get started. DIYers, here we are back at the Craftsman workstation. And again, this is part seven of our lower unit full rebuild. Scrolling above right now is a link to part one. It will run you through all the videos up to this to bring you up to speed. And what we're going to do prior to installing the prop is we are going to perform a pressure test. And here are the three fittings that came with our pressure test kit. In our case with our Mercruiser, it is the smallest valve here. And it has a rubber O-ring to create that airtight seal. The top portion here will go into this fitting here, this is our hand pump and pressure gauge. We'll show you that here shortly. In addition, we have a C-clamp and just a couple pieces of rubber and what we need to do is we need to block off this little oil feed line and rubber seal because without doing that we won't be able to do the pressure test and that is where the c-clamp is going to come in as well as those pieces of rubber in addition scrolling above right now is a link to a video that gives you a full review on this cool hand pump and gauge we love this however what we'll do from here is reposition the camera and get started. What I did next was rotate the entire stand and lower unit 180 degrees and I also added some shipping paper to the back because I needed a little support to help hold this lower unit more forward and up on the stand itself and that's going to give us the access we need to remove this drain port. On the opposite side there's my C-clamp and I used two pieces of rubber on top to create that airtight seal on that oil feed gasket and hole. Down below I used an additional rubber too alleviate scratching. In addition, I have a thick flathead screwdriver, a pick tool, the fitting, and a brand new yellow rubber O-ring for the drain port screw. First, I'll grab the thick flathead screwdriver. I'm going to align it and properly and safely remove the drain screw. As shown here, set that in a safe location. Next, I'll grab the pick tool. I'm going to carefully remove the old O-ring or gasket, as you see right there. Grab some paper towel and just maybe about five to 10 seconds, clean out the inner thread that that drain screw screws into. Pretty dirty. Next, I grab the adapter, ensure that your O-ring is installed. I am not going to install the new seal yet. I'm just going to properly align the thread. Do not cross thread this. It should go in extremely efficiently and easy. If it's not going in, back it out, realign it and begin screwing it in again. Do not over tighten it, but you do want it snug as shown here. Next, I'll grab the hand pump, and here is the fitting here. I will align it and apply some friendly pressure until it clicks and locks in place, as shown there. What I'll do next, grab the hand pump. I'll try to give you a good view of this. The first couple pumps, maybe five pumps, your gauge may not register because you are putting air into a hollow case, and it may take a few seconds to fill that gap with air. And ours is registering. Again, with our specific serial number, we have between 13 to 17 PSI. And in the event that you hear hissing as you pressurize this, go ahead and release your air from the case and pinpoint the leak and address it. As you can see, I'm just shy of 5 PSI. And this takes a few minutes. And some friendly strength. Right now we're just shy of maybe 8 or 9. And DIYers, here we are dead on 15 PSI, as you can see here. And right now, great news. No hissing or any signs of this air bleeding out the rebuilt case. Taking a step back and again, here's the configuration. We are holding 15 PSI, as you can see right there. And right now we're going to give it maybe about three to four hours. And if any air seeps out of that, we need to address whatever is causing that. However, if we come back in about three to four hours and it is dead locked on 15, again, we are very happy. That is a successfully rebuilt lower unit. DIYers, here we are at the halfway mark. And most people will do this for about 30 to 40 minutes. However, we're going to do it for three hours. As you can see, we are still deadlocked at 15 PSI. And at the halfway mark, what we are going to do is rotate the propeller shaft. And the service manual calls for this because in the event that your lower unit is creating an airtight seal in the present position, great. However, if you move the propeller shaft and it begins hissing, that's not good. That needs to be addressed. And in our case, moving the propeller shaft back and forth doesn't do anything. And that is what we were hoping for. Still deadlocked at 15. 
And again, the service manual calls for that because the present position may be holding an airtight seal. However, the movement of the prop shaft, if you hear hissing, that needs to be addressed. That's not good. However, in our case, both stationary and movement back and forth of the prop shaft, it is locked on 15 and that is good. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, DIY is back at it. Got the gloves back on and here is the pressure gauge. Again, deadlocked at 15 PSI. That is a successful pressure test. What we'll do now is press the pressure release valve and we are going to drain all the PSI out of the case. And once it zeroes out, I'll set the pump down. We are going to remove the fitting. We are now going to carefully unscrew the adapter from the lower drain port. Set that aside. And I went back to the OEM style gaskets as you see here, as opposed to the rubber. What I'll do is grab the drain port screw and put the gasket over the actual screw there as you see. And I'm going to screw this in. Again, do not cross thread this. That's the last thing you want to do. You want it snug, but do not over tighten it either. I changed camera angles. I'm now going to remove the C-clamp and carefully, no need to rush this part. You don't want to scratch your lower case. Mine's pretty beat up. So in our case, it doesn't matter much. And again, the two rubber pieces here, and you can see where the little piece of rubber made an imprint on the top oil feed O-ring. Coming back up top, just ensure that your rubber O-ring is still in place and not damaged. From here, let's rotate the stand in the lower unit. And we did just that. We have access to the rear portion of the case, the propeller shaft, bearing carrier, etc. DIYs, this is an incredible hand pump and gauge kit. We definitely recommend it. However, scrolling above right now is a link to a video that shows you the common causes of an unsuccessful lower unit pressure test. So in the event that you are trying to pressure test your lower unit and air is seeping out, hopefully we can help you pinpoint the exact cause and help you get it fixed. From here, time to install the lower unit to the upper unit. Here's our new hardware, some part numbers. We'll talk about that as we continue with the project. We're going to lubricate the drive shaft splines and remove the old hardware. I reposition the camera. Again, I'm using the Quicksilver 24C with Teflon. That's what that PTFE stands for. And do not overdo it. I just have a little bit of grease on my fingertip and I'm going to lubricate the drive shaft splines. as well as this O-ring that we also lubricated in the previous steps during the water pump install. Next, direct your attention to the water tube. In the previous step, we also greased or lubricated the base of this tube. There is a seal in there. Here is the old water pocket cover, overheated and melted as you can see. And you see this little indent right there. The way this works, when we shift the lower unit in place to the upper unit, it is going to guide this water tube through the brand new tube, and the base of it is going to go into that seal. So you want to make sure, again, that seal is lubricated. But the brand new water pocket cover is already installed on the upper unit. Next, we have three 5 8 nuts, and carefully remove these without dropping them inside the engine. Next, remove the washer as well as your small little Phillips screw, as shown here. Now to a close-up, ensure that your seal is properly flush in position with the top portion of your water pump housing. I also added some 2-4 grease to the oil seal here. Slide to the back and remove the bolt that the anode secures to. Back to the hardware, here is the old bolt we just removed. Here's the new one. And what I'll do down below in the comment section as well as description section are links to where to purchase these parts. New hardware and very important DIYers, you have to install this bolt first or prior to securing the lower unit back to the upper unit because if you forget to install this at this step, you will not have the option to install it when the two are connected. Now to the upper unit, a couple pieces of hardware that we need to remove. Coming down below and two 5 8 nuts on the bottom. and this bolt right here. Back up top, coming inside where the shifter is. Very important DIYers, ensure that it is placed in the forward position. Not this way, not that way. 
but forward and perfectly straight facing this little bolt hole and screw hole. Back to the lower unit and just as important, the shift shaft bushing rod here, you see the splines that I'm pointing at, rotate that clockwise and we need to lock the propeller shaft as shown here. By turning it counterclockwise, you will see and hear or feel that the propeller shaft is locked in place. Taking a step back and I am at a huge disadvantage with the outdrive disconnected from the boat. If your upper unit is still connected to your boat, that's good, it will be easier. Bear with me as I go through the next steps. Back to the upper unit, I wanna come inside and show you where the drive shaft is going to sneak into. See that little oil seal right there? The drive shaft splines will go up and into that and the splines themselves will attach to the splines of the vertical gear already installed in the upper unit. At this point, I've repositioned the units and the more I thought about it, I'm going to do this in reverse compared to what you do with the upper unit still connected to the boat. In other words, I'm going to keep the lower unit as is. I'm going to pick up the upper unit, shift it into place, align everything and lower it down and secure it. And again, as I shift this in place, we have a threaded stud here, two here, the drive shaft, the water tube, two threaded studs on the lower portion of the upper unit will feed right through there and this little pin right here. So take your time, be patient and precise. In addition, as I shift this in place, I have to remind myself that the lower unit stand is not designed to hold the weight of both the upper and lower connected. I've got my left hand in place to align the copper pipe with the water tube. And once that's aligned, carefully continue shifting this down and on the studs. And from here, just kind of jiggle it in place. And if it goes all the way through, great. If it does not, you will have to shift down below and rotate the propeller shaft to properly align the splines inside. Coming to the back side, and again, counterclockwise just a little bit. And you saw it fall just a hair. You can see the threaded stud coming through. I'm going to position the nuts in place and carefully, without cross-threading them, screw them in. That one's hand tight, coming to the back. And again, no need to rush this. Next, I've got this washer and that small screw. Align that properly. And I'm gonna wait on the screw. I'll set that right here. And the 5 8 nut, go ahead and hand tight only. And from here, I will carefully, again, without cross-threading it, screw that screw in hand tight. And the screw is gonna alleviate that washer from turning as you tighten the nut. And next, my brand new 5 16 bolt goes underneath the lower unit, feeds up, and will help secure the back end of the upper to the lower. And again, hand tighten. Next, tighten it in place with your 5 16 Allen. And as I tighten this in place, you may see the back end of the upper and lower begin to get closer and closer. And that's a good thing. I'm not going to tighten this all the way. Back to the front 5 16 and again these have thread locker on so they are going to continue to get tighter and tighter and here shortly we will grab our torque wrench now to the back Next down below, you have two openings that the threaded studs from the upper unit feed through and five eighths nuts here. Go ahead and hand tighten them and secure them. Next, go ahead and tighten them with your socket and ratchet. Back to the front five eighths nut. Now that we have all the hardware secured, let's go ahead and reposition the outdrive to the other stand. And here it is back on the stand designed specifically to hold the upper and lower connected to each other as shown here. Back to the workbench and a special thank you to that lower unit stand. During this entire project, it worked perfectly. Here is our Anno kit 
And down below in the comment section as well as description section is a link to where to purchase this as well as a link to a video showing the entire replacement of our anodes. However, for this video, we are only installing the trim portion. Let's go and open it. Here it is opened up and the additional anode portions inside. And this is magnesium. This is for fresh water only, as you can see right there. These anode kits come in aluminum, zinc, and magnesium. And for your convenience, down below in the comment section as well as description section also is a link to a video where we talk about the three different types of anodes and what they are used for. However, in short, magnesium is for fresh water, aluminum is for both, and zinc is for salt water. Let's go ahead and remove that sticker. Sticker removed and again, Earlier in the project, we installed the new bolt prior to connecting the upper to the lower. As I mentioned earlier, if you forget to do that, that's not good because at this stage, you won't be able to fit this bolt inside. Real quick DIYers, I wanted to show you the difference in condition with the old anode and the new one. Check that out. This one has seen its better day. It's even cracked. Look at that. Big difference. Time to install the brand new anode. What I've got here is a 3 8 Allen key. I'm going to shift this down into the hole here. Grab the bottom bolt. It is now inside the bolt and I will shift the anode up and in place in the circular cutout. And without cross threading this, carefully tighten your anode in place. Now to a close up of the brand new anode installed underneath as shown here. Next, I grab my Craftsman torque wrench. I've set it to 35 foot pounds. We need to torque the three lock nuts to 35 foot pounds. Two on the bottom, one right here. I'll start with this one. And you will know the lock nuts are torqued to 35 foot pounds when the torque wrench itself makes a clicking sound. And I'll try not to get in your way. There it is. Now to the bottom, to the bottom. And again, all we're waiting for is 35 foot pounds with that clicking sound. There it is, to the opposite side. There it is. I'll center the outdrive back on the stand. Back to the workbench, and now it is time to install the new cap. Look at that, what a difference. Can you believe it, DIYers? We have been busy. Back to the outdrive, and inside here is that bolt. Again, we had to install prior to connecting the upper to the lower. And our brand new cap here, the plastic teeth, Align it properly and just push it in place, as shown here. That looks a lot better. Different camera angle now. I'm going to just slide the propeller on, flush. And from here, I'm going to rotate the yoke shaft. And at the same time, I'm going to test forward, neutral, and reverse and verify that the propeller is rotating accordingly and correctly. And right now it is in forward. And that is good. I'm going to shift the shifter to neutral. It should not move, good. Now to reverse. And that is good. You also want to check for clearance between the propeller and the brand new anode. And as you can see, not an issue. Back to neutral. Back to forward. Awesome. Here's a better view of it. Again, forward, neutral, and reverse. Back to the workbench, and I've got the outdrive tucked away in the corner there, directing our attention to the propeller. I'm going to sand it down, repaint it, get it all fresh and new. There is the Quicksilver Phantom Black that matches your outdrive. However, we're not going to bore you with that in this video. We will post that link down below in the comment section as well as description section. Definitely check that out after watching this video. And with that said, we'll film that video and we'll be right back with you. Back with you DIYers and we have repainted the propeller. And it looks great. Nice and shiny. And we've got a bunch of new parts. The thrust washer, continuity washer, castle washer, which is this big piece right there. And we've got this piece right here, which will be positioned in between the nut and the castle washer. And the propeller turned out very well with that light gray primer and phantom black spray. What I'll do now is reposition the lower unit and continue the project. Back to the workbench, I have repositioned the outdrive. We'll get to that here shortly. 
I wanna show you new compared to old parts and starting with the left side, the thrust hub or washer. And first glance, two things. Number one, it's a different color. And number two, I noticed it's smaller. And so I called the headquarters, Mercruiser Technicians and talked to them about it. And they informed me that this part is for a different propeller. So we're going to clean up the original thrust washer and use it. As far as the continuity washer, this is a very unique washer and it's kind of confusing or tough to see, but each tooth is bent in the opposite direction. So really when it comes time to install this, there is no right or wrong way to install it. To the right of that is your castle washer. We will use the new one, just a different color. I like that and the prop washer and we'll use the original nut. Let's head to the outdrive. And here's the propeller shaft, the splines, and the thread, and inside here again, the bearing carrier. And as far as the propeller shaft, it makes a beveled upward mold to it right here, just prior to going into the oil seal on the top portion or outer portion of the bearing carrier. And grab your thrust hub washer, as shown here, and the back side actually has a rounded machine cut to it, which will go right on over the splines and mate with that beveled portion of the propeller shaft as shown here. And again, make sure that the thrust hub washer is installed properly. You'll notice the machine cut right here. Next, we need to lubricate the propeller shaft splines with 2,4-C as shown here. There's what it looks like inside. And just grab a little bit on your finger and really lubricate the splines of the propeller shaft. And this is going to make it easier down the road when it's time to take the propeller back off and service whatever you need to service. After lubricating the propeller shaft splines, I cleaned all the grease off my fingers. I'm grabbing the propeller. And as you see here, that is the part that goes on and just carefully align the splines and it should go right on. And shown there. Back to the workbench, what I'll do is grab the castle washer, also known as your spline washer, flip it upside down. I'll grab the continuity washer and I'm going to seat this on the back side or underside of the spline or castle washer prior to installing this on the propeller shaft. In an update again, all I did was install the continuity washer on the underside or back side of that spline washer. Back to the outdrive coming inside the propeller, I do want to show you a close-up view where we are right now. You can see just maybe a quarter inch of the spline coming out of the propeller. And that's what you're looking for because again, the castle washer only has about a quarter inch of spline machined into it. Another quick reposition of the camera will continue the project. Grab your castle or spline washer as shown here and carefully slide it and align the splines as shown here and push it flush with the propeller. Next, grab the prop or tab washer and install it as shown here. Last but not least, your prop nut and the rounded portion will face outward. Do not cross thread the thread, that would not be good. What I recommend doing is hand tightening it first. And once it aligns with the proper tab washer, you will notice that will spin with it, as shown here. See that? And I'll hold the propeller with one hand. And all I'm doing is hand tightening the propeller nut. From here, what I need to do is grab a block and place it in between the propeller blade and the stand to alleviate the propeller from spinning. I want to keep this in neutral because the next thing we're going to do is apply 55 pounds of torque with our torque wrench. And I don't want that 55 pounds of torque being applied to the internal gears. So again, I'll grab the block and keep the entire outdrive in neutral. There it is, DIYers. I placed the 2x4. I'll raise the camera just slightly. There is how I have it positioned and I will shift the propeller until the lower blade is flush on that board. Coming inside to the shift crank and make sure it's in neutral. Next, grab my Craftsman torque wrench and I have it set to 55 pounds. And DIYers, no need to rush this, go slow, be precise. And all we're waiting on is for this torque wrench to tighten that propeller nut to 55 pounds. And once it gets to 55 pounds, the torque wrench itself will make a clicking sound. Quick update, I applied a second 2x4 to alleviate the propeller from sliding as I apply this 55 pounds of torque on this prop nut. There it goes, 55 pounds is set. Do another close up and I am going to remove the 2x4s.
And the next step, very important, you've got two important things to take into consideration or check for the service manual. Number one, the service manual calls for at least, in other words, a minimum of two threads showing on the propeller shaft after you apply the 55 pounds of torque. In our case, it looks like we have three, almost four, so we're good. And the second thing, you've got all these tabs on the prop or tab washer, and at least three of them have to line up with the slots on the castle washer per the service manual. In our case, we've got one here, here and right there we'll bend those three in what i did next was actually put the two by fours back in place to alleviate the propeller from rotating and i'm sure there's easier ways to do this but this is how i'm going to do it i'm taking these needle nose pliers with an arc and i'm taking one jaw and going through the hole of the tab and applying some pressure to the second one to the third one and surprisingly this is pretty friendly it's very thin aluminum. And unfortunately, it looks like I scratched it. However, very simple fix. I'll touch that up with some paint. And there is the finished product, as you can see. I'll remove the wood. One last thing per the service manual, after you apply the 55 pounds of torque with the torque wrench, and you come back down here and check your tab washer in relation to the castle washer slot, the service manual states, if the tabs are not aligned, go ahead and continue tightening that nut slightly past 55 pounds until you get at least three tabs aligned with the castle washer slots so you can lock everything in place. Back to the workstation and DIYers, that completes part seven of our lower unit full rebuild. We hope this helped. What we'll do next is perform a pressure test prior to adding the gear oil. And in previous video, we pressure tested the upper unit separately and all went well. However, now that everything is back together, we are going to do one last pressure test with the lower unit connected to the upper unit. And again, everything installed. And if you want to check out that video, that video is scrolling above. Again, we hope the video helped. Do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.